Uh, our government seems to like the idea of a national minimum wage, but what about business? We talk now to Gerard Poppenfuss, who's from the National Employers Association of South Africa. Mr. Poppenfuss, good evening, and thanks so much for your time. You stood earlier before uh, Parliament's Labour Committee, and you were making the case for why a national minimum wage uh, should not be set. What, what are your chief concerns? Um, the only institution that can really set a wage is the market itself. If you prescribe a wage to the market and you miss the right level of the wage, it, you, the market will shed jobs. And uh, there's various examples of uh, interference in the market which, which causes job losses. I've today mentioned one example. I've mentioned two examples. One was uh, the metal engineering industry, which is the most severe uh, uh, example of interference. Um, th that industry lost 700,000 jobs in the last 30 years and that was from then on where the industry really started interfering. In the last five years alone, 250,000 jobs. Manufacturing lost a further 59,000 jobs this quarter, previous quarter. And we are now in that industry on employment levels where we were in 1972. In, in this period, the population has grown with 31 million people but the metal industry didn't grow. This, uh, an example is the clothing industry. So when you interfere, and, and what, what people miss, they, they reckon that uh, a minimum wage can reduce the gap between rich and poor. It can actually make it worse. Well, certainly one of the uh, schools of thought around setting a, a minimum wage is that you will prevent things like exploitation. I mean, as you said, if there's a discretionary right on companies, you know, to come up with their own numbers, and as we've seen in South Africa before, workers are prone to exploitation yeah well that that is that is so that's without a doubt and i, I mean um, uh, there will be and there will always be exploitation but you know what they are exploitation even with the minimum wage there are uh, employers um, it's happening in the clothing manufacturing industry where there are minimum wages but the employers don't pay it if an employer is faced with the situation of paying the wage and getting, getting out of business or not paying it go on the ground uh, uh, drives a, a switch off. That's what they do. So don't uh, think that introducing that kind of a wage will prevent exploitation. And and what we say is what South Africa really need is growth, a, a, a an environment where we can compete, where we attract investment, and what we really need is uh, labor intensity growth. Because there are millions of people, and the moment, the moment you introduce a minimum wage and you, don't, you miss that target, a very low target, the most vulnerable workers are actually exploited because they won't get into the market. But Kasati, perhaps on another you know, aspect of what you've just said, also believes that a, that a minimum wage is going to, you know, it's going to insulate the, econ the economy. It has the macro economy at heart because it does things like basically head off strikes at the pass. And we saw Ivan Jim famously at the end of July, at the end of the, 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 the strike in the manufacturing sector, saying that this will certainly insulate not only that sector, but sectors across the board in South Africa from strikes, which, I mean, you know, and, and we've seen the effect of well, strikes. Well, it, it will, it will uh, for in the metal industry, it, it will... Uh, has as a, a, a consequence not having strikes for three years, but the industry, that industry, will lose 30 to 50 thousand jobs as a result. But you, you know, if, if if unions say that if you give us what we want, we will have, there will be a labour peace. Well, you're right. There won't be strikes, but thousands of people will be out of jobs. Um, so there will be labour peace, but if you think that that latest increase will be a, uh, a stimulant to, to, to growth, he's missing it. It will not, well, the fact is this very industry is talking about. This is the industry I said is losing jobs. Thousands of businesses are closing down in this industry. And, and so because it is an unnatural interference in market powers. Well, who do you think Gerard uh, uh, Poppenfuss uh, is going to have the last say on this? I mean, we've heard Sol Ramaphosa at the Ned Lake Summit today saying, I mean, it's pretty much a done deal. The question of whether or not it should be applied is not even a question anymore. Let's talk about how we can get this going. Yeah. You're coming from a diametrically opposed position, the union certainly on, on, on the side of government on this one. I mean, what are you going to say come, come November yeah. when we're set to sit down and resolve this once and for all? Well, my approach today was, I take it as a done deal. It's going to happen. Um, but 
I've uh, encouraged government to make very sure that they don't miss the level in which they introduce it. Now, Kusadu said to me what they want is a uh, across the board minimum wage and then sectoral wages from there onwards. Differentiated. Absolutely. The, the issue is what will that wage be? Well, what, what, will, what, what, will what would that? you like to see? What number, are you, what, what number do you have in your well, mind? Well, you know, they've asked me that on, more, on numerous occasions today, and I, I avoided that, that question. Didn't well, that's it. why I'm asking you <laughs> now. Well, <laughs> you know, the, it, by giving that figure, uh, is, is flies in the face of what I actually say. Um, uh, if, I, if there's time, let me, let me use an example. I've asked an audience once uh, on a particular day, is 300 rand a month a good wage? 300 rand a month. And everybody said, of course not, it's terrible. I said, but you're domestic, a domestic working in your house. She's earning a particular salary. If she employs somebody to look after the children for 300 rand a month, is that still at such a bad wage? And everybody said, no, that's a different that's a different story. I said, no, it's not a different story. It's the same story. It's just a, a, a different take on the story. So, you know, a, a wage is subject to so many issues, where it is, where it is applied, that if it's in Kuruman, it's different to what it is in Johannesburg. Um, the industry, all kinds of things. Are, are you afraid that this, uh, this Labour Summit is not going to take those, those, those differentiators into consideration? Well, that's the danger. Stick? That's the danger. And, and they come up with the proposal, what about exemptions? No, forget it. That will not work. I mean, can you imagine hundreds of thousands or thousands of employees applying for exemption? Now, you must forget, the wage that you set must be realistic. It must be accommodative. If you miss it, you'll have job losses. Well, we're certainly not going to come up with the number between the two of us tonight, but we appreciate your insight. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. as always, Carol. I appreciate it. Yeah, Carol Carpenfuss is the much. CEO of NIASA.